Hello, welcome to the second Bowls Hour. It's not actually an hour, don't panic. I know you've got other things to do. But I'm going to read you the, a bit of the second chapter of The Bowls Go Wild, which my publicist insists I inform you is available now. Chapter Two. The second the window was open, the bird flew in and perched on top of the television, looking around the room. Hello there, said Uncle Tony, who was just finishing a slice of fruit cake. Can I interest you in these crumbs? He held out his plate in the direction of the bird, who looked at them hungrily. Thank you, he said. That is most kind. Could someone bring them over here? I've had rather a long flight and my wings are all flapped out. Betty jumped up and took the plate from Uncle Tony and rested it on the television next to the bird, who immediately began to eat all the golden crumbs. Delicious, he said with his beak full. While he ate, the bowls were able to admire his lovely plumage. It was dark grey on his back, but much lighter over his chest, with stripes of darker feathers from chin to legs. His head was a soft pale dove grey, and he had a short yellowish beak that curved downwards and startled looking eyes of even brighter yellow with a black centre. Very quickly the crumbs had all gone and the bird looked around expectantly. Would you like some more? asked Mrs Bold. Well, I don't suppose you have any caterpillars or grasshoppers, do you? Uh, I saw some caterpillars on the cabbages in your vegetable patch this morning, Fred, said Mr McNumpty. I'll go and get you some, offered Betty. She took the plate and went out to the garden. While she was gone, Mr Bold filled in the silence with some jokes. Where does a caterpillar buy his clothes? A catalogue. It wasn't one of his best jokes, but the hungry bird seemed to appreciate it. The bird's laugh was more unusual, a sort of coo 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 sound. Encouraged by his reaction, Mr. Bold tried another joke. What's a caterpillar's favourite weapon? A catapult. The bird nodded appreciatively and again let out his gentle coo-coo laugh. What is the definition of a caterpillar? A worm in a fur coat. Oh, that's a very good one, complimented the bird. Your jokes are quite a tonic after my long journey. Have you come far? Three thousand. 583 miles, the bird answered nonchalantly, giving his chest feathers a gentle peck with his beak. Wowzers, said Bobby, impressed. No wonder you're so hungry. Did you do it all in one go? Uh, no, said the bird. I had a comfort break in Morocco. Then I ate so much pasta in Italy, I couldn't take off for a week. Just then, Betty arrived back from the garden with seven or eight green wriggling caterpillars on a plate. Despite being so tired, the bird flapped his wings with delight. Ah, oh, thank you. The crumbs were very nice for a starter, but this is my main course. He deftly picked up the first caterpillar with his beak, tilted his head backwards slightly, and it was gone. Heaven, he sighed. I haven't had one of these tasty feathers since I left England six months ago. My name is Hector, by the way. There was an awful lot the bolds wanted to know. Where had Hector been? Why had he flown back? And why had he tapped on their window? But they all sat in polite silence while Hector enjoyed his dinner, which, it has to be said, didn't take very long. When the last juicy caterpillar disappeared into his yellow beak, he sighed contentedly. Thank you, thank you, he said. You're all very, very kind. Now, would you mind terribly, Fred, if I had a little sleep? Fred looked surprised. No, of course not. But how do you know my name? Hector didn't answer. I could perch on the curtain rail, if that's all right with you, he suggested, yawning and blinking with evident tiredness. He didn't wait for a reply and flew the short distance to the window, settling himself in the corner. Perhaps you'd better put some newspaper down on the floor, he added. I sometimes do my business in my sleep. Embarrassing, really, but that's our cuckoo way. 
You're a cuckoo, asked Bobby, looking up at the bird, who ruffled his feathers. Hector's head drooped as he gave another yawn and his eyes began to close. I am, yes. I'll tell you everything when I wake up. I'm really sorry, but I am so, so tired now. I've come to tell Fred something very important, but we'll have to wait until... Hector's eyes closed altogether, and within seconds there was a gentle cuckoo's noise. But, began Fred, not now, whispered Mrs. Bold. He's snoring. No wonder after that long journey. Let the poor bird have some rest. Let's leave him in peace. She turned out the lights and signalled for everyone to leave the room. They all crept out in silence, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'll see you tomorrow for more Bolds Go Wild nonsense. Till then, bye-bye.